first off, I'm just going to say I'm a, I'm a little um, a little ticked off with myself. I'm tr I was trying to avoid becoming a serial um, video maker again because um, and also focusing on live stream. I was uh, talking to Zoe uh, earlier in the day and um, I was talking about retirement and so on and so forth and due to the fact that at the moment, uh, there's, you know, three things going on in my life. There's, you know, the live stream World War One game. Well, uh, okay, look. The live stream World War One exploration. This game, gaming, I mean, uh, this, but it goes back into the World War One ex, uh, exploration. And then there's work. And at the moment, I can't do all three uh, to the level that I want to do. Well, one of them, I never want to do them, but that's called retirement. Um, so I, you, I mean, I will always let this slide is what I'm trying to say, uh, out of the two. Well, obviously I can't let one of them slide my work because you know, I won't get, I'll get fired for Christ's sakes. You get the idea. And the other one is such a, um, um, I feel so obligated to do it. It's not funny now. Like it, it's uh, like, like that's how I'm feeling. I just, um, yeah. Anyways, let's get to this. Um, my three R's is what I'm trying to figure out. Cause I, oh man, well, that's why I, I guess uh, why I'm doing this thing and I was a bit uh, getting a bit ticked off that I am being coming to serial. Uh, Cause I want to go off and write most of these uh, thoughts that are juggling around in my head. The problem is there's a hell of a lot of them and um, yeah, they're popping off like, you know, like uh, fireflies or whatever, like, you know, a campfire embers or whatever. I'm just, I can't catch them quick enough. Um, and I'm like, oh darn. Uh, yeah, I should have jot like tiny little notes like Kissy Cat mentions about always bringing a little notepad around. I should be doing that more often. Uh, the, one of the reasons is when I started looking at, I was staring down here at the map for the Russians and I'm like, the hell are they even doing in this war other than I, I understand trying to uh, help their uh, Slavic brothers I do believe um, the Serb the Serbs but um, a part of me is like what the hell are you doing like there's not like well now I, I've looked at it in my game terms I'm trying to reclaim territory that's what I'm I, you know I'm gonna do but I was at this point I'm like what the hell are you even like what strategic like, but you're in there, you're in it now, I guess is what, you know, I was looking at it for the Russians. So I've been trying to figure that out. And I'm like, and then I was looking over at the grand strategic map there. Um, the, sorry, the, what, what is he called? The strategic map. And um, I'm then looking at it, uh, at, you know, Russia historically. And I was, I remember, uh, I don't, it probably happens, yeah, in 1915, because that would make sense, because I probably re uh, read about it in the chronology. But uh, I know that Russia was having a hard time uh, due to the fact of the, uh, well, they couldn't ship out their wheat uh, through the Dardanelles and all that through, you know, um, and I guess they could have before the war started. And then I was like, wait a minute, I just did a non-aggression pact with the Russians in the Ottoman Empire. Um, what the hell does this mean with the, the wheat exports and stuff? I was like, I don't know. I was like, oh, shoot, um, because Russia would really like to have the, the wheat pumping out, please, so, so we can get some money here. So I don't know what to do. Um, it's, a, it's a great I don't know what to do wrinkle, I mean, obviously, but uh, so I'm trying, like, in, in the back of my mind, narratively speaking, that's why I said I'm trying to, i got to go upstairs and, and start writing again, but um, there's just a lot of, uh, so I was thinking, okay, if I can uh, voice it out rather than just have it in my head. Um, you know, rumbling around in there. Maybe something else will poke out. Um, so I'm trying to now think that the Russians are going to say, hey man, uh, not to be rude or anything, but, but uh, maybe this will tie it all again in with uh, when we get to the December truce. Um, is they're going to probably start, I don't know, trying to get a bit more, uh, uh, by the way, we need to have our wheat exported through. So I don't know how this is going to work. How in the world do you get, uh, I'm supposed to export my, like, my Russian goods through, okay, somebody I signed a non-aggression pact with, 
but my allies are at war with. Uh, it's, I don't know. This guy's going to be interesting. I, I just, I love it interesting. But anyway, so uh, when we get down to, the, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. But oh yeah, there was another thing I was reminding myself if I'm going to start swapping um, jackets and Lord knows what, so I should just at least raise the cuffs. Most of my stuff kind of hits, uh, hits these things. So what, then I was looking, okay, what are we going to do here? And I'm, I'm looking at, I'm calling it the three R's, I guess you could say, um, uh, for January 1915. Rail. Damn. Uh, sorry. Um, rail. Retreat is the uh, third one. What, what was the second one? Hold on here. Rail. Jeepers jumping, Chris. You had it there before. Rail. Retreats was going to be for both sides. I'm trying to anticipate uh, not being cut off later if something goes pear-shaped. And if something goes pear-shaped for them, uh, um, uh, where are they going to try to retreat to? And I'd like to cut them off. Um, hold on here. Jeepers jumping. I had the three R's. Uh, rail. And retreat's the third one. The second one should have been uh, super easy. Maybe it's not the, well, they always say the middle child is the one that's ignored or something, don't they say? Um, rail. Rivers, for Christ, effing sakes. Jeepers jumping, Chris. We're staring at them enough times here. Uh, ri yes, rivers. Um, so that's why I was like, okay, here, we've got the sand river. Uh, oh, I did it again. Jesus Christ, I'm a crush. Because I've been staring at this F and set, oh, because of the discrepancy, he's trying to figure out the set. Doesn't matter. That's still bad, bad, bad. I should put the Boog River a bridge back. Well, obviously, that's the Boog River. I can't give up the Boog River. Um, so I'm looking at, like I said, I'm looking at areas. Well, we're not gonna. I don't want to give up Cernuwitz, so I have to figure out how I'm not going to give up Cernuwitz. Um, the other thing is now I've realized we're not going to give up Kielce and Rhinum. How in the world we're going to do that? I don't know. Um, but that's where I'm at. Um, I'm looking at, like I said, uh, rail lines will be protected uh, and how to feed into where I want to go. Second, rivers. Um, we're either going to, uh, well, fall back behind them or, or, yeah, use them as defensible areas. They're going to be like a wall for us or like to sh guide us uh, where we're going to go. And the third one is, uh, if things go pear-shaped, where are we going to retreat to, to some good defensible areas, have them ready, and hopefully do not get cut off that way, and vice versa. Where are they going to try to go to? Um, uh, th and here's the other thing. I rem oh, thank goodness I'm doing this, because uh, uh, there's another thing I forgot about. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to pretend, I have to look at what, what can the Germans do? I have to look at this from the Russian aspect. I'm, okay, I'm a Russian general here. Um... I understand the Germans can uh, move troops left, right, and center, but I have to start looking at it that way. I can't just, like I said before, um, and I could see the other player on the other side in my mind. Um, I can no longer be reactionary. If I'm reactionary, I've lost the war as far as I'm concerned, the battles or whatever the heck. Um, that other person's pulling my strings. I'm just a marionette. Uh, screw that crap. I can tell you that much. So uh, that's where we're going. Um, do I feel confident as the Russians uh, going into January 1915 for the Eastern Europe conflict zone? Damn right, because there's basically not much other things for them, really, except, uh, no, there really, there isn't. Um, geez, not bad. Um, so, yeah, and we're bringing the Caucasus army over, and there's going to be those natural... Um, in, oh my God, there's the other thing I want to start, I have to, uh, and it's in um, connection with the live streams and um, uh, looking at trench warfare and so on and so forth. I, just early days. Uh, looking at the differences and also connecting the dots with Der Velkrieg rules. Later on when he starts also, ta Dave, uh, Dave Schroeder starts also talking about um, uh, later on in the war that both sides uh, started cluing in on how to make better de defense works regardless. So you'll see like, I don't know, I can't remember, like 1916, you can use wooded rough, almost like a trench kind of thing, that type of stuff. Um, and I was thinking, wait a minute, are you telling me that the Eastern Front trenches 
And there's just some little motto, I can't remember the heck who uh, said it, but it was something like, Eastern Front, um, too much land, not enough men. And, uh, and then the Western Front, um, uh, too many men, not enough land, or something like this. Uh, and then I was thinking, are you telling me that these uh, trenches, both sides, um, are, are going to be as elaborate as the, maybe they were, I, do, I doubt it though. Uh, as elaborate as the Western. Um, so, I, yeah, that would be interesting to see what was going on. And if that's the case, uh, I'm not, well, I actually did say in a previous video that I would trash the living and I'll probably continue doing so. It's, I mean, it's, it's a love-hate thing or whatever you want to call it. Um, obviously, the, this rule system is like, a, I know that the trenches uh, with the Hindenburg line later on goes, it, it's a bit different. But um, all the trenches are, you know, uh, with, a, with one brush kind of thing. Um, we need to say, hey, okay, but, and, and you'd say, oh, you're being a bit whatever. Excuse me, take a look at all the flipping modules uh, and how many guile darn um, specific or exceptions there are to rule, uh, you know, scenario specific rules. Good God, man. So don't, don't give me that crap. Um, uh, you can't say, by the way, uh, if you're playing, uh, you're going to construct a trench on the Eastern Front or on this map, uh, it doesn't have the same um, effects or, you know, same whatever attributes as uh, a trench on the Western Front. And then we get into something that Meandry Mike mentioned ages and ages ago, which was about, uh, hey, wait a minute, there doesn't seem to be any supply cost to, or uh, I can just make trenches willy-nilly. Um there you go. Uh, uh, is there some way of later on looking at this type of uh, uh, game system and you go, you know what? Okay, I do would I would like to make an like when you start getting into the sandbox grand campaign thing with this thing. Um, uh, why can't the Russians, for example, say, you know what? We are stuck in East Prussia. We're gonna pull a, of course, it's you know what I meant. We're gonna pull a Germany. I mean, we don't. Maybe they are looking because uh, they do. All sides were looking, man, and adapting and trying to figure out things, left, right, and flip and center. Um, why wouldn't they say, "Hey, why not?" We're going to start trying to construct uh, really uh, those three-line trench systems and so on and so forth, and make it a living flipping nightmare for the Germans to ever try to take us out of. Like, make it. This is their version of France, for example, and Belgium. What's wrong with that? Um, so I'm going to take a look at this, uh, that type of a thing. Makes sense to me. Uh, but then how do you, you um, how would I incorporate that into a rule system type of thing of, of saying, okay, the, if the Russians want to have a um, Hindenburg style, well, not that, not that Hindenburg line. Okay, how about we call it Western Front style trench system? Uh, mind you, like I said, I don't know. Maybe the Eastern Front uh, trenches were as elaborate. I doubt it. Um, like I said, I'd love to find out. Um, maybe it'll cost me more. Uh, you know, okay, you want to, like, it'll cost you nothing to build a normal trench, uh, or I should say an eastern front trench. It'll cost me X amount to do a, a western front trench. That'll be interesting. To, uh, to, those are the type of things I have to go run upstairs and start writing up and down and trying to, uh, whatever. What I'm trying to say, oh, God, man. Yeah, I've got this. I'm going back to that, oh, God, man, moments again. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, the three R's. I'll, well, maybe that's what I should stick to rather than the old gods. I'll go back to the three R's, which are, because I don't seem to remember, uh, rail, river, and retreat. Okie dokie. Hope you're having a great time, and uh, hope to God this is the last video before uh, live stream and I focus on that properly, because this is ridiculous. Okay, bye.